I'm going to go over the big, huge, massive secrets to ensure that you know how to get the best possible video when you're out there on surveillance. The first thing you need to get great video is to have a great camera. Make sure you have a name brand camera like Sony JVC or some other well-known brand. If it sounds like a cheap Chinese knockoff camera, well, it probably is a cheap Chinese knockoff camera. Those cheap models tout the same features, but seldom, if ever, produce the same quality of video. In fact, most of those cheap ones have very poor video with drop frames, fisheye views, and well, just plain bad video. Second, make sure your camera does at least 720p, preferably 1080p or 4K video. I always shoot in 1080p as I don't usually see a difference between it and 4K when it comes to surveillance work. And 1080p produces smaller files than 4K, so it's a little easier to get your work product to your client. For zoom on your camera, you want at the very minimum 30x optical zoom, preferably 40x or higher. Make sure you are looking at optical zoom, not digital zoom. Many cameras offer 500x digital zoom or higher with 10x optical. You really want to have video stabilization on your camera too. Video stabilization technology helps with shaky hand syndrome, and trust me, you're going to get shaky hand syndrome when the adrenaline starts pumping when you're out there on surveillance. This video is sponsored by OREP Insurance and Working PI Magazine. OREP is a leading provider of private investigator liability insurance. Visit OREP.org for a quote today. I also recommend using a dark color, black or dark blue camera to help hide you while you're shooting video inside your car. Trust me, people will see that hot paint camera in your windshield, so you want one that blends in a little bit better. Date timestamp is an absolute must have too, folks. Your camera should be able to either display the date time on the video when you pull it, and most do not do that, or it has the date time embedded in the metadata, and most do that. Then you can use software to embed that date into the actual video so it's displayed. Now let's take a quick look at some of the other accessories that you'll want to help ensure that you have great video. First is a tripod or a monopod. Now I use a smaller tripod like this. I rarely use it as a tripod though. I keep the three legs together and I use it as a monopod. Now I recently had a case where I almost had two hours of video of my subject. Most of this video was in 20 to 30 minute chunks. So having a smaller tripod, I was able to set up my camera on the passenger seat of my surveillance vehicle, shoot video out the side window and leave it to record. Now use your tripod as a monopod or using a monopod is huge while conducting surveillance. This helps you keep the camera pointing and focused on your target with limited shake and movement. Now I put the legs of my tripod or the bottom of my monopod on either my leg, the seat of my vehicle, or the center console. Another huge consideration, folks, is the focal points for your camera. Your camera, if on autofocus, will try to focus on the closest identifiable object it sees closest to the center of the camera viewpoint. So if there is trees between you and your subject, it may try to focus on a branch or a leaf or the trunk of the tree. This can be overcome by moving the camera slightly to one side or another or shooting in manual focus mode. Now myself, I prefer autofocus, so I try to adjust my angle of the shot to get my subject in a clear line in the center of my screen. However, if that is not always possible, another thing that you can do is just pull back your zoom a little bit, make it so you're getting the tree and everything else, including your subject in the video. The number one thing that you need to do to help improve your camera's focus as well clarity in your video folks is simply to keep your windows clean all of your windows your front your back your sides even those little ones I always stop at a gas station when I'm close to my starting point and I clean all of my windows the one time you skip one window will be the one time that you can only see your subject out of that one window make sure you also keep a squeegee window cleaner water and paper towels in your surveillance supply kit you will need these for cleaning the insides of your windows mirrors and spot cleaning the outside windows and mirrors. Let's take a look at the techniques of shooting video while on surveillance. Here are some stills from some actual footage that I obtained. This is not from a real case. These are just random photos of people and places out there. Here is an example photo where a tree is blocking the driver's face of the white van. This is a scenario where you'd want to move your camera over slightly to the right so you can shoot around that tree and get the face shot if at all possible just like this. Notice how clear the face shot is. While not perfect, it's pretty good considering that I'm about a thousand feet away. In this next shot, you will see why it is important to get that face shot. As you see here, there's high sun glare in the driver's side window and no face shot could be made. Another thing you want to pay attention to in these is the subject vehicle license plate. I intend
intentionally keep my zoom back a little bit to make sure that I get the subject, his vehicle, and the license plate as well. There's some signs in the area that help identify where he is getting his fuel. Now this photo shows the view out the side window. Notice a few things here. One, the photo is very dark or gray. That is because I'm shooting through a tinted window. In the event of a scenario like this, I might actually put my window down two or three inches and then try to shoot out that to make a clearer shot. You will also notice there's a portion of a mirror in the bottom left and part of the window frame in the top left of the photo. Make sure your video does not show your vehicle parts if at all possible. All you need to do is start zooming a little first then hit the record and get video like this instead. Much clearer, still grayed out a little bit because of the tinting but I could also get a face shot if needed. That leads us to obtaining video of the subject in his or her entirety. When it comes to injury claims especially, you want to try to always get the subject's entire body. The key would be to first zoom in and grab a quick face shot, then zoom back and keep the subject's entire body in the video while grabbing video of his or her activities. This shows the client, the doctors, the judges, the juries, everything that you saw. Make sure you avoid constantly zooming in and out on the face and then in and out or zooming in on the injured body areas and zooming back all the time. If the subject has a knee brace or something like that, I might initially zoom in and get a shot of that, but then I'll come back and I'll get the entire body of the subject. Now let's take a quick look at zoom differences of a camera really quick. Here is a photo of the entryway for this big box store. I'm about 1,500 feet away, I would guess. Can you even see the entry door in this? Now here is the entry door at 50x optical zoom. You can see all the letters, you can see everything there, and I could probably get a face shot of somebody walking in or out of that store. Now let's zoom back a little to 40x. You could easily get an ID shot with 40x. What about 30x. Well, here is 30x. Still good, but a ways away, but it would still be very good video. Now let's zoom back to 10x. Hmm, not very good. It's clear. You can tell where I'm looking at, but if you had to get an ID shot, you probably wouldn't be able to take that out of this video. Crop and edit in the camera is another technique that I use to help with the quality of my video as well to cut down on the video editing time. If you start shooting and you have this shot with the mirror and the door in it, then you have to zoom in. Then you would want to edit those first few frames out at the beginning to take the mirror and the door out. I bring my camera up. I zoom in to where I want to be really quick. I stabilize myself and then I hit the record button. When I'm done shooting video, I don't zoom back or I don't just put the camera away. I turn off the recording first. Then I move my camera. This makes it nice, quick, smooth, clear action for my client and a lot easier for me from an editing standpoint. So this is how I would do it. I would zoom in to get a full shot of the subject. I hit record. Then I zoom in slowly to get the face or the ID shot. Then I pull back the zoom to where I have the subject in full view. Then I continue grabbing video until I am done. Then I hit the record button again and then I put my camera away. Let's say your subject's walking down the street. Shoot the video until he goes around the corner. Then you stop the video. You go into a new position and you resume shooting the video about the same zoom factor as you were before he went around the corner. Now if you don't have a tripod or a monopod, then use your arms to form one. Grab the camera with both hands. Put your arms out to make two legs and you put your elbows on your knees or on your steering wheel or some other stable surface. Other great tripod techniques is to use a clamp tripod like this one or maybe a wraparound tripod like this. These you can clamp on or wrap around things like a steering wheel. These are great for times when you're shooting long periods and do not need to move your camera. Avoid freehand video recording if at all possible. It's really hard to get stable video and smooth zooming with just one hand. Shut off your vehicle and put it in park before shooting video. This can help a lot with stable video so you don't get vehicle shake or sudden movements if your foot comes off the brake. 